Hey, hey, everybody. I'm so sorry that we are running late tonight. I apologize. Um, Um, so we have my guy Eric for helping to figure out how to do Um so we're here. So well, sorry we're late, um, uh, but never for the rookie. Um so anyways, hey y'all, everybody that's new, everybody that's back, welcome back. Um if you don't know we're here. So this is the night, we are late, but we're here. We already know what time it is. Time for no punches pulled with no mercy. Some of you already know, some of you may not know. I'm your host, Brooke Milbrook, formerly known in the fight game as Brooke No Mercy Deardorff. I am a retired professional boxer. I held the WBC lightweight title. And also as of 2022, I am now International Women's Boxing Hall of Famer. I have personally been through some good, some really bad, and a lot of BS in the sport of boxing. So welcome to the platform where we talk the talk and we walk the walk. Um, my goal is to bring out the truth in women's boxing. So you'll hear from pioneers in the sport, past boxers, current boxers, even future boxers. Um, we'll be getting down and dirty, speaking the truth of what takes place behind the scenes in women's boxing. You don't want to miss a show. So make sure you like, subscribe, and share so you don't miss us live every Tuesday. So today we have a really, really good one for you. We got this special guest in the house. Yvonne Trevino, Against All Odds. Um, my special guest today, Yvonne, a.k.a. The Terminator. She really needs no introduction. Most of you probably already know who she is, and that's why you're tuning in today. Um, but she's known as formerly a kickboxer, also a boxer. She competed in boxing from 1993 to 2001, fighting the best of the best there was in the flyweight and bantamweight divisions. She was in there with some big, big names, such as Kelsey Jeffries, Suzanne Riccio, Bridget Riley, Jolene Blackshear, and Regina Halmick, to name a few. Please welcome to the show, Yvonne. Hey, Hi. hey, girl. We finally got you in I'm here. Technology challenge, but you know, God, that's the important part. Yes, you're here, and that's all that matters. And I see we got some of, some of our... Um, audience already tuning in women's boxing channel what's up thanks for coming thanks for sticking around and waiting us out <clears throat> my voice is muffled oh it's good again fixed it eric must have been doing his magic in the background i apologize you know the beginning of the show anyways you've been here enough you already know what i was saying probably um Thank so you. yvonne eric yes um it is such an honor to have you on the show um, thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedule to come talk to us about your personal experience um, in the sport of women's boxing. Um, how have you been? Good, good. You know what, Brooke? The honor is mine because you know what? If we don't out there and alive and communicating, you fade out. We do that. Yeah, we're the previous generation of fighters. Compared, the media has gotten a lot better. I didn't even have a cell phone. I wish I had took so, so many videos, so many footage, a camera. We had a camera, and when we went, either the flash didn't turn out, something terrible, and it uh, so, the always technology. something. <laughs> it was always something. Yeah I, can, yeah, I can remember when I first started. We had like the you know the VHS camcorders. So a lot yeah. of my fights are on the VHS, and so you you can't really watch them unless you still have a VCR. I got to get them converted over. Um, yeah, me but yeah, too. Get definitely permission just to even utilize it. So yeah, it's something else. Yeah, yeah. always something, always something. I tell you. Um, so we do have several different topics that we're going to be discussing tonight with Yvonne um, about her career, her life. Um, going through, um, give, we're going to give her the chance to shine some light on the truth um, about her history and her past. Um, I feel like every woman deserves the chance to shine and showcase really, really the truth about their career because um, I know people outside looking in, they just don't have a clue about a quarter of the stuff that we have to go through as women um, getting it to where it is today. So that's that's the goal here. And we're going to give her a chance to tell us her side of the story um, about her career. 
Um, first, do you want to flip through? I got a couple of your photos on slideshow. Before we get into the questions, do you want to kind of flip through those and you can kind of just briefly explain the photos to everybody? Yeah, definitely. If you select it, because I know I gave you quite a bit. I did. I kind of had Eric just do his thing and pick like the ones that he thought were the best and we put them in a little slideshow. Um, we, Eric, do you want to throw like in, in a copy? Uh, yeah. Yes. Do you oh. want to throw in the photos, Eric? Okay. So this is probably your most notorious photo that everybody knows you for, I would imagine. That was the only nice one that we tried to hire a photographer it just came out miserable or terrible and by the time i got a really good paid a really good towards the end of my career so i do, do have a few of those and i'm going to get those to, to um fox because she wants to be able to put them in, in a book yeah but yeah I, that's that's, that's, that's five that was against regina how much and it was uh in kickball and then yeah. when we got the Calls that the WIBF was just getting, and that a whole bunch of women here in the United States, as well as in Europe, were going to meet at the Aladdin, the original Aladdin, before it got imploded, uh, for us to fight. So, I already boxy matches underneath me the Arizona State title, you know, United States title, and then finally, and little did I know that Regina had was a very big celebrity. She, we had a camera crew following her everywhere we went at the pool or well, she was just followed by the media and the, the camera crew and I remember sitting with the other boxers and we were like, wow they go Yvonne you need to win in this fight <laughs> they do something and I said Absolutely. yeah and you never get to see any video footage you have to step in the ring and wing it it's totally, I don't know, survival mode. You have no idea what they're coming, coming with at you. Your eyes and you do what you what you've got. You throw, you present what you have. Exactly, exactly. Um, totally agree there. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's more footage nowadays, but um, even back in my time, it was still hard to find footage. Um, yeah. Uh, flip. What's the next one you got, Eric? Cool. So this one was very nice. This was a photographer, I'm assuming. Yeah, finally, I'm starting to come around. This was when I moved to Las Vegas. Um, already went to Vegas. Uh, uh, signed up, signed a contract with a realtor who, who was go presented himself as somebody who read him through a friend, friend of friend and whatnot, you know, in the fight industry. And it was just, it was, we'll get to the, you know, a lot of the stuff that was going on. But anyhow, Moose didn't have a lot of work. So I was trying to do a lot of po uh, modeling and this for the Playboy Jazz Festival. So I wanted to keep it, taste the, uh, a thong on <laughs> and talking at the bottom. And I know I talked to you about uh, Playboy that I also had an offer for it and um, so did Mia St. John and I ended up saying no because, because um, I just didn't feel comfortable enough the family's going to be looking at it and believe me Brooke I needed the money so bad and, and yet I had to sit there and decide nope I, I yeah, I can't do at it. that point, what's more important, you know, your family, you know, not agreeing with what you were doing um, or the money. And that's really a really tough decision because when you're in that scenario, you really need the money. Um, you need the help, but you also don't want to feel you don't want to disappoint your parents either. Um, and so that's a really other, tough one. But this was a very tasty other, photo. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with this. Oh yeah, I believe on that one definitely. The yeah. other thing we were running again is remember, do we have to do this to get the notoriety? Why does it take? Oh, she did this. 
can't you just acknowledge the women and then if other things present themselves it yeah it it um, yeah um, we should that have to do photos like this to get exposure not really it's just uh, not remember necessary. back in i remember uh the uh wibf jimmy finn why nothing happened between the women between a gap of 1995 to 1997 was marketable we were all wearing our warm-up suits our baseball caps on here to him he says real hard to tell the difference between you know a little boys or if you guys are women i changed my whole look every time i went to weigh in or any did any kind of presentation and then that could be a double-edged sword then they weren't taking boxing serious oh was this boxing so it was a double-edged sword it was difficult very very um nick what else or eric what else you got i don't even know why i said nick eric <laughs> um so yes um yvonne was the ifba and the wibf two-time world champion um this was a really nice photo i like the i like the photo here i like the stance I, and just the, the stare down look you got the stare down look <laughs> we, we finally got our own photographer paid for those negative photos these are the ones that i'm only allowed to to utilize and give to like, like sue fox or any copyrights to it this is ours yeah. yes yeah you don't want people taking them <laughs> <laughs> what do you got next eric Same thing, same photo same. shoot. Uh, different photo shoot. Uh, then mine uh, that I went to grade school with. Her mother uh, was a photographer, and you know, she's getting the uh, uh, the agreements and copyrights. And um, my best friend, while we were doing this, she goes, "Oh my God, Yvonne!" She goes, "I remember you. Sorry, sweetie, being such a prankster because I was in school. I mean." And I, if any time I could get her to catch you off guard, oh, I was just a prankster and a jokester. And uh, she just a lot of looking at a lot of the photos that we did. Thank you, Women's Boxing Channel. Can you can you hear her at all now? It's it's like kind of like a little delay on my end, so I can hear her, but it's just a little bit of a delay. Can you understand what she's saying now? I don't know that there's anything else Eric can do. It's just kind of her um, connection with her phone, I think. Talk slow. He said, try talking slow. Maybe that'll help. Um, okay, try the next one, Eric. Um, so this was you with Jackie Callen. Um, you did work with Jackie Callen briefly, right? Yeah, after the, the uh, W. IBF. Well, remember what I uh, WIBF stripped me of that title because the the International Federation, the IF, I decided I'm not signing any more contracts. I'll fight for you guys. I'm gonna stay a free agent. You know, I'll sign the amount that we agreed to. All those wasn't gonna sign exclusively for for the organization. WIBF Jimmy Fan was angry and said, "Oh, you, you're our exclusive for the International Federation of Boxing Association, and we're going to strip you of that whole thing about women's boxing and, and making these strides. Stay busy. Who cares? The men get to have four or five, five different organizations and belts to fight for. And I'm telling you, from 1990." to about 1998 one fight that we set up and that was with the uh abc wide world sports now that one jimmy finn sanctioned prior to that against delia gonzaga bob, bob aram card under the jesse james Leha undercard we couldn't get this agreement for i don't know if jimmy just didn't uh have enough time going on brooke they were in Germany and Regina in the flyweight division. They were getting one fight after another. Kim Messer, uh, she was another one that I had fought in kickboxing. 
were busy but did nothing for the flyweight division. So, of course, after the activities, so I said, okay, I'll take the IFBA. If something new is coming on the scene, okay. And then afterwards, not call me until like two or three years later. I mean, I mean that's yeah. how the industry was. You know, the fighters yeah. nowadays need to, and it was political. Very, very. Um, Eric, what else we got? So this was, uh, I'm assuming like a news, like an article was from article printing. Yeah, this was uh, when Jack Allen was no longer anybody, you know, she, she promoted WIBF, if she could because she, she was the spokesperson for her women's boxing. She was campaigning for it all the time there was a moment where magic johnson was considering um uh, uh, mike tyson and it was the point when mike tyson was angry and how he nickeled and dimed him out of the money and that in the end he always ended up with about it then the frustration of the holyfield fight and biting holyfield's ear when he got his title taken away from him right license from the Nevada Boxing Commission and they say oh, just keep your nose clean and then he gets in a confrontation at an airport and in the meantime Jackie Callen and Magic Johnson Productions were working on so that fighting could be on Friday night fights on the network and all day clean just get that license back and when uh, Magic Johnson went with him to Nevada a boxing commission they brought that incident up at the airport and they said we really don't get your license back and you know when it comes to business like that and locking in networks your funding what are you going to do now where are you going to go he ended up Matt johnson just ended up investing in this and he had to stay busy he had to keep his network going you know he had to, he finally pulled in a lot of actors stemmed off into the movie industry but again, you know, it's just odd thing, things that were just, just not pushing and happening. And uh, yeah. it, it was frustrating. Big as Jackie Cullen helping out, helping, rep, you know, re representation to try to get it somewhere. Else. It was sometimes, like I said, sometimes it was self-inflicted and other times it was completely just either the male chauvinism that just didn't want to see women's boxing take off. Exactly. The, can't stomach women beating and blooding each other up. So we had to get past those, those barriers. Exactly, exactly. Um, Angie, what's up, girl? I see you in the chat. Hello, Martha. How are you? I'm not sure if you're talking to me or Yvonne, um, but we both say hello. Um, Hi. Eric, what's next? Hi, baby. She wanted to come up my lap. Oh, that's okay. She can have the spotlight too. <laughs> Eric, she Eric, Eric. Eric. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, so this was with when you were working with the IWBF. You've know, got Barbara Buttrick in the background. And I'm assuming this is like all the current champions, correct? Right. This is the WIBF 1985. And this is Barbara Trip. This is her baby. This, this is her dream organization. She's she was the previous fighter, before, pioneer before us. The heart and the drive and the dedication of putting something like this together for us. And it's worse odds than we did. We think we had male chauvinism. It was worse when she had it. I mean, show circus type of uh, entertainment. And it, it, it took, took a long and she is, is a wonderful person that put this together. And of course, Jimmy Finn was, was her uh, CEO. Oh, I'm not sure what exactly he did, but here's all of us. This is an exact, you guys didn't look marketable. Well, of course, right after a fight. Well, yeah. Right? I mean, nobody does. I mean, I don't think any of us are going out for a beauty pageant when we're getting in the ring after a fight. And you don't say 
say something like that to the guys either. It's like, like well, you guys aren't marketable. Right. Well, you didn't go comb. You didn't go comb your hair down like it's sticking up everywhere or. And take off that it's face. Like, yeah. Come on now. Come on now. It just kept tripping it up and slowing it down for us but we it, it, we had to keep had to be pushed you had to keep going yeah exactly exactly um eric what do we have more um i don't know which fight this was i can't remember now that i can't see it but you got her definitely up against okay the road. this is brenda rouse april 19th 1997, ABC Wild World Sports. Now, Ben from the WIBF sanction. So, so here is my first uh, uh, title, title defense. Think. Yeah, from like 1995 to 1997. Two years it took for this one to come through. And kept trying to tell him, let's, there, here we have, have Delia Gonzalez stepping up. She wants a shot. At it, it's under a major Bob Aram card. It was be televised. What was? Yeah, they clearly mm -hmm. didn't stick to the um, time frame that you had to defend your title back then, because no, now you have like so like six months or something you have to defend, and there's a certain amount of time, like a window, or they strip right. you. Right. Um, that they should have implemented well, that back hard. then. Yeah, so it's a lot. Lot more organized yes um i think we have one more eric if i remember right that you put together yeah was that this was later on too right in your career I'm trying to think which, that might have been against suzanne and rikio major let me tell you something that had my controversies against suzanne rikio major that was like the April 2nd, 1997. Yeah, April 1997. You know how referees will come to your dressing room while you're getting your hands wrapped over everything. You know, I want you to listen to my commands. If I tell you to go to your corners, go to your corners. Uh, if I, uh, I only want shots from the waist up. Uh, um, if I see that, that you look like you're in trouble in the corner, or against the ropes and you don't answer after 10 hurt i'm stopping the fight and i thought wow they're being way over protective over me. we're here we got you know play the game okay all right i'm not going to give them a reason to stop mine <laughs> but for some reason we were busy in the ring and then all of a sudden i guess to catch a breath on the ropes for a while and and if you're going to lean up and or Get in the corner, man. That's my time. I'm gonna find some holes. And maybe after a barrage of 10 punches, she didn't answer. The time was the referee, the late Mitch Halper. Um, he was a good referee. He's definitely missed in the industry since, you know, since past. But he stopped it, let off a whole barrage of the audience. Everybody was upset. But again, ahead of time, the rules. You know, how do yeah. they say, it? you know, I got the assignment. What yeah, I mean, you got the assignment. She missed that. I guess she missed that part of, you know, you got to answer with something. Something. No. I yeah. mean, I've had a lot of those too, but they usually will give you either fight or whoever it is, like a warning first, like, hey, throw back now or I'm going to stop it, like type of thing. Um, they clearly didn't do that back then, but. Yeah, if it was a close fight, back and forth, back and forth, definitely premature stoppage for sure. I'm, um, but that happens a lot too. That definitely happens. Yeah. Um, I think that's that's all the pictures for now, Eric. Right? Yep. Okay. Um, so first, um, I would say let's like rewind all the way back to the beginning. Tell us briefly about um, your childhood. Um, if you want to speak on your family. Um, siblings, and then the journey that you that led you to martial arts and boxing, like when and what led you to want to become a fighter? Yeah. Well, all through grade school, I was, there was three, my parents had, and then my sister came like seven years later, but us three kids, 
I mean, we grew up in a, we lived on a dead end. We had a field behind us and we got creative when it came to playing outside, outside in the street. Nobody was worried about, oh, somebody's going to come and steal you guys. So we're that generation where we just played and my brother put me through all, all kinds of obstacle courses. So if he can, so I grew up athletic. Um, then in the uh, grade school, I uh, had a fourth grade teacher who saw my talent, and she was a photographer. She goes, you have, you are so talented. She goes, do you know you can go to college and what? Let me play that you know they. I have to go home after school. She goes, well, let me talk to them. So she came, and my parent, and she says, uh, my dad threw everything at her like, oh. Oh, no, she has chores to do. She says, well, I'll bring her, I'll drive her there, bring her back. Well, the insurance is too expensive. I was like, well, you know, we're a missionary church and she needs to study after her bowl. And she goes, you don't want your daughter to go to the chances, the possibility of getting scholarships. Oh, when he said, you know, no, oh, I was so pissed. Oh, I was so angry. But every chance I got during recess, I played sports all the time, and I, 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 just, I stayed active. Yeah. And then by the time I went to high school, you know, very strict. They meant well. They're very good moral people. But my brother and I finally saying our rules, our way, or there's the door. And one day him and I just said bye. We let <laughs> boy. I mean, I, uh, I got do some pretty serious major trouble at times and then um you know i had a real bad incident at you know i i, I you know you're young you're not naive it's all the stuff you're learning about don't trust your friends or you got to be careful not everybody's got your back had an incident where somebody slipped something a roofie in my drink and it knocked me out waking up that evening and in, you know, a strange place, somebody laying next, what the hell happened? And, and, you know, I was, I started hitting him. I'm like, where the hell, what's going on? And, um, I mean, I finally got everything I needed in, in a scenario, but the sad thing about it is that um, when something like this happens, you need to go get counseling and you need to go get the help. And I did, yeah. And that troubled me for years. I mean, for a while, you know, I started uh, drinking anymore. Um, it was some serious issues I needed to deal with. But the one thing that came out of it was sport. So I loved it. And uh, uh, I got back into high school. I got out and I got back in. And, and sure enough, I started getting scholarships last right for women's ball cross country and you know the opportunities happened and i took off that good yeah i mean um definitely um if anybody out there that's listening is going through anything like that um whether it be depression or sexual assault or issues any kind of issues definitely reach out to somebody it doesn't always have to be a professional counselor even though that would be recommended but Definitely make sure you're reaching out to somebody to talk to um, and work through the problems um, so it doesn't get worse later on. Um, so then after school, um, I, you obviously started doing kickboxing first because you had several titles in kickboxing. So you that was your first journey into the fighting world, right? Yeah, right out of college, I uh, was playing softball. I got married. Um, uh, one of their, our, uh, everything was great. great. You know, he was very supportive when it came to myself. But then when we got married, everything just changed. You know, you got, I saw another side. I don't know if it's because our culture, male chauvinism again. I mean, I couldn't wear my muscle shirts to work out. If, if I had one shirt, it was drama. And it was becoming very psychologically abusive. Uh, that I knew how to change my own oil, my own vehicle, my own truck, uh, alternator belt, simpler to work at that time. 
and um, I wanted to be out there just hanging out. And he's he was the type that no, the kitchen is the women's job. And then I had I was expecting, and I uh, had my daughter. You know, I kept once I was done with everything inside. Of course, I time I managed and organized, got everything. You know, watching, handing him tools, and and he said, "Okay, you want to get." down here and changed this fuel. I got down there and he was telling me what screws and bolts to unloosen and then gas face in my eyes. And all, all I remember is gearing up, getting out of there, running in the house, screaming full and um, trying to rinse some, the gas, the fuel out of my eyes. And he sat and laughed, are you all right? And I was like, like you asshole. <laughs> I mean, I was yeah. like, Eyes and the whites of my eyes looked like raisins. They were shriveling up, up and salt water, anything I could to kind of get the fuel out. And I just thought to myself, that, you know, why why am I staying with this guy? Because we already argued and debated things, you know. Um, you know, it's it's it was different. So when you, you know the girls now need to understand and not only were you know, being married and having that cultural male chauvinism trying to keep you uh, um, eventually I ended up filing for divorce and, and when I did I had there and it turned in into a real big major um, anywhere I roommated or stayed with was scrutinized it didn't happen with my daughter and it just rang bells involved and now I had to always go to CPS meetings. Um, they needed to know where what times was I leaving out of town and coming back. And of course, you know, my sister and some family members were while I left on my fights. And uh, I had full custody, so she refused to pay child support. I said, okay, why don't we file joint custody? That way you can be and we'll both be responsible right so we filed the paperwork and I failed to put the school year with you and the summer times with but I didn't say out of state so one day you know I was in Vegas for years I was in Los Angeles and it was a battle for me because I wasn't allowed to take her with me anywhere it had to i had to stay in the state of arizona so it made it uh to to deal with uh, but I, I was adamant on still and, and deal with that and still spend time quality time with my daughter there, there was days where he was vision and he was, was just burning up and he turned around and told my daughter look at all the money your mom my paychecks are getting garnished for the past child support right and he was, was just too bad where even my daughter after a while was starting to question things mom mom you doing this and mom and I was, I was always having to reiterate and straighten things out with her it was it was a it was it hitting the gut a lot of times i was hitting the heart with a, a lot of issues and things that came meaning to my daughter always being the, the victim because both of us were constantly fighting it really did. She had to eventually get counseling and stuff. So as parents, we have to watch, say, and do around our kids because they're, they're affected as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, they are. Um, but today, you you guys have that all figured out and you have a good relationship with your daughter now, right? Yeah, my daughter finally felt around the hit one of his episodes and this like I said, he was so difficult, the drama and just changing. And one day my grandson cracked his head on the it and she had, you know, everything's Facebook now with this generation, right? Yeah. So the emergency room with Max, you know, he, he he has staples in his head now and we're doing fine, you guys. Oh, he ripped it in and said, what? There are you. I should call CPS and you're terrible. You're like your mom and on. 
and all her friends were, were, were Facebooking her back, back. What's going on? You know, why the drama? And then another incident happened where they um, headed out of the house so, so bad. I mean, I guess that's the type of mentality he has, even in his own stuff of the drama. And he says in an argument, I'm going to go live with my sister and all oh, her text again uh, on a Facebook. You want to try to take, take my son away? Watch me. Arms and I'll watch me. I'll take I'll take your, your grandson Maxim to the point where to get you know a, a, a court or, or protection out of the picture. I mean, he really himself fit, but she went through the trauma. I went, but I was able to get the divorce and control a lot of it. It was, and um, you know, it. I don't know. Sometimes just there are some males that can't stomach that, that women want to get. We want to progress. We have timeline saying we, we can participate in sports now. It's fun. We can go uh, uh, compete now, and and I guess it's hard for a lot of these uh, guys to deal with. Now, now it's completely different. Things are right right in there in the corner. Going to support their uh, their uh, girls that are in the gym, and so a lot has changed. It's gotten yeah. a lot better. It it definitely has. It definitely has. Um, Women's Boxing Channel. Thanks for tuning in. I understand it's late over in the UK. Um, you can catch the rest of the show later. Um, we'll see you next week. Um. So also then it was 1993, I think, when you transitioned into the boxing world. Um, can you tell us about the tra transition in your experience starting out in boxing? Yeah, 1993, busy. In 1994, I was busy kickboxing. Chris Cruz uh, in Davenport, Iowa, and won that fight. Uh, I Bridget Riley in California. And Bridget Riley's the... She's awesome. Her, her and talk with her. She's a stunt double. She works in the movie industry at that stunt double for the Yellow Power Ranger. And it was a real popular movie. So it was interesting that, that because again, I knew nothing about my fighters other than, than oh, wow, she's a Hollywood stunt person. Yeah. Okay, on that doesn't matter. Let's see what she brings, right? So, right. <laughs> tough battles. It really was. She was an awesome opponent. No, she came from a kickboxing and, and martial arts background herself. Yes, yes, she did absolutely. Um, so then, I guess we'll fast forward to the big the big fight in the beginning of your career in 1995. You defeated Regina Holmick for the WIBF World Flyweight Title. Um, mm -hmm. Explain to us how. I mean, I I saw footage, so I mean, I know how it went. But explain to us, from your perspective, how the fight went, and then your experience working with the WIBF um, with Barbara Buttrick and Jimmy Finn. Well, like I said, um, the whole organization seemed to center the the whole process around her, the crew around her, um, media with their. Recording of the what the tigers, the two guys that did the show with the white tiger. Uh, if everywhere we went and seemed to run into her, it was a camera crew everywhere. So it was real intense. On the bout, uh, it got stopped in the third round, and in the first round, went back back into the corner and and um, tried to tell my uh, trainer again. And of course, you don't want to say. It loud because the, the commission is sitting there listening. If they hear it, he goes, he just whispered in my ear. He goes, if you want this bad, just take a heart. So I did. I just uh, ignored it. And you know, whenever the opportunity presented itself, I'm a son that was broken. I just kept plowing away at her. And eventually, uh, I just switched from eight ounce gloves to 10 because of that fight. I complained the whole time. I do was feel my knuckles. 
and that I guess that's the eye open the bottom of the eye was uh, um, yeah that was early on the cut under the eye yeah it wasn't they complained she complained uh, and of course they had drugs so I had to take the piss down words believe it or not because they couldn't believe how I just kept going at it going at it and there was, there was a point in where I if you the uh, um, one of the rounds I uh, threw a hook and missed and she sat stood there and went like this you know made fun of me and shot right I was over my the heel the front my front leg my head was like all the way over the bad one but for her to sit there and mock me I said come back here then come on quit running laid off a flurry of barrage of punches and um you know the bell finally the uh ring doctor didn't feel that she was able to continue going they was cut and and they didn't think it was a good idea for her to continue stopped and i i just remember her being, being so upset because she, she knew she had all behind her riding on the, on her win yeah, and she didn't. Get it. She was trying to interview both, both of us after the fight, and she says, "Oh, oh, this was not the real championship. It was luck." And I remember Bridget Riley was commenting on that fight, and she says, "That's what you're there to do. That's your job, and that's not luck." So real immature and young at that time. I mean, you know, I think she was like 19, and I was. Not that young, but enough to know. Come on, yeah. Own it and just say, "Hey, match. I brought it up to her first. Yeah, we will. I give her a rematch. I said, "Yeah," and she's so upset. But I remember the camera crew. I went and told her corner, congrats them. They wanted a picture of us, so we posed together. We took a picture, and she was still. I remember grabbing her her hand. And and raising both, both of her hands because I was thinking to chant I may make it positive win or loss we are self from just let's just so I, I said hey we're both champions here and uh Barbara but they just, just thought that was ex excellent that was a great promotion but again after that I quick it it's like when are we gonna finally get a rematch and yeah. Kim Messer um, that I fought, fought against, and I lost a a fight against her, and then I won an international second time we fought. She was supposed to fight Regina before I did, but it didn't happen. And she was waiting and waiting for that to happen, and not me. And then got her opportunity after her loss. So I went division could have really taken off and stayed together but you needed to keep every busy everybody yeah. busy that's just the nature of the yeah because you, would you thought, have i mean you would have definitely thought after you beat regina that you would have been then that you would have been you she would have wanted to fight you next for the title that you would have been the mandatory for kim messer right instead of her right. going right. back and still fighting Regina when she just lost why would you still want that fight and not want to fight the champion yeah that's kind of confusing to me I'm not gonna if there's a title fight on the line and the person that I was expecting to fight loses well I don't want to fight that person no more now I want to fight who won I want the champion so that's confusing to me that she went back and fought Regina instead of fighting you and that right. that fight never did happen in boxing correct you never Which fought one? her in boxing, Messer. No. Oh, Messer, no, that, that never happened either. I would have liked 1998, Dennis Diaz, I think, stepped in. And one time I got a phone call when I was at with Freddie Roach trainers. And um, I got this phone call and he's like, hey, somebody wants to talk. So I got on the phone and they're like, we've been trying to get a hold of you. They says, yeah, I went again. And I go, wow, wow, really? Three, almost three. Three years later, they, yeah, they go, you know, idol, and you know, we've got a stable of girls coming. I'm sitting here thinking, what about the Regina fight? Maybe we could work on that down 
on the road, but I'm like, well, you know what? Honestly, I'm not even that. I bulked up. I was already fighting for the IFBA. When they stripped it and looked back, I said, okay, forget it. You're not the only organization. Okay. I'll stay busy with the bang and I'll go from there. The other yeah. thing with the IFBA, I didn't sign, signed, uh, it, you know, fight contracts. And again, you know, what was getting secluded? I was getting kind of pushed out of the, the um, you know, how when they do and everybody who signed up gets a letter to go show up here for, yeah. uh, for interviews. And I wasn't invited to that stuff. I was kind of left off to the side. But those, when that Jolene Blackshear fight came up, uh, uh, it was for the IF. FBA or um, it wasn't the title fight. It was just a, a a fight to stay busy, right? Yeah. Uh, that fight energy here here in Arizona. And this is another thing that I'm going to let you guys know about the promotion side of it. Uh, it was difficult for a lot of us. My local promoters here in Arizona was and Peter McKinn at that time. And he had a lot of uh, fighters, Jim, uh, uh, a lot of Mexican fighters that were staying busy and fighting. What was going on during these promotions? These fighters weren't, weren't getting paid their purse money, uh, uh, a judgment against them in court. And he, here I am, my aunt was uh, just coming back home after, after Vegas and after Los Angeles and trying to have my aunt and my brother help manage me. You guys do the negotiation. Just tell me what weight I need to be in. I don't want to do anything but focus on Well, she wanted to let Tom Gaffney because he was real persistent. He wanted to know what I was doing now and guys that uh, got an argument with one of my, that manager in Las Vegas over here in Arizona. And he didn't want to pay for the plane ticket for my manager Phoenix because I was here again, you know, spending time with my daughter training here or two and then just kind of jumping back and, and they got in this argument in this battle between two bulls right mm -hmm. not gonna pay a two-hour drive well that's my girl I'm her manager and, and I served you know the plane Yvonne don't take the flight and sitting here saying, come on you guys figure this out you can't you know I just want to fight and right. he just said no hung up and and calls me and says don't you, don't you dare take that fight so you know tom gaffney turned around and says hey he goes if you want this fight you can take this fight i'm not here. he goes you need to make up your mind and tell me now and he goes i can get any whip back fight to fit you know to take that shot and when i when he said that i'm like really you think, think of people what do you even think of the women and I remember telling my, my aunt, I don't want him wanting to try to step in and manage our fights. And, and um, my aunt, I go, this guy is not a down character. I don't care. This is what he had said. And, and I didn't say the word whip back. <laughs> yeah, but the conversation happened, dude. I'm not willing to own it that you said that. Yeah. Yeah. But trying to trying to drive his point. Uh, and Arizona had a boxing promoter that was so shady, and, and eventually these fighters and got it back. But it, it was so, it was, it was really difficult. And I remember um, uh, Michael Carvajal, who's our local fighter here, going to a lot of his autograph signings, and I boxing belt to him and saying, "Hey, Michael, I'm this I'm Ivan Trevino, and I, I'm here's my first Arizona State, state title. Will you?" autograph the back, back of the belt and he goes oh yeah sure, sure and i go what do you think about women's boxing it's supposed to take off off and he's like i don't know I'll talk to my brother dan you know manage that part and i said it's okay i found danny one day and ran into him on his way into the house and i say danny look i got all these titles arizona kickboxing and, and i just won the wibf title fight you know sponsorship can, can I start training at your, your gym and he just kind of stepped back and chuckled 
Gold and says, money's not there for the women. He goes, I really don't think it's going to take off. He goes, just stick to the, the thing, right? Years later, like 1998, after already had the WIBF, the blue, he calls and says, Yvonne, he goes, um, hey, over and manage your, your career, but it's got to be just me only. And I says, well, no, I have my, my, my aunt and my brother still in it, you know, and I have my two cousins that are training. It's still a team, yeah. effort team here, but, but, but yeah, you know, got what, what idea, you know, run it by me. And he's like, no, 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 no. He goes, I don't do business like that. all the decisions or it's nothing at all. And I says, well, then you know what? I guess it's, it's nothing at all, Dan. And I says, I already have a call. It's, it's a matter of fighters stepping up. Yeah. And, um, but, right. And then not too long after that, Michael's career, fights. And then uh, next thing he knows, he's in a court battle against his own up and betting all his money. And I, I sat there and thought to myself, oh, oh my God. Um, uh, they couldn't pin it on him, but his, he was going, his wife and her husband suspectedly shot in the back of their heads on the way to their court date, uh, their uh, divorce date. And they said, you know, they couldn't pin it on his brother, Dan, and somebody else was involved. And, and they served time. And the daughter got a slap, slap on drama, you know? Yeah. Um, it was one thing after another. It, it, so, yeah, it left him broke. And he, he was still able with, with the community, still able with his Ninth Street gym. So he still has his gym. He's still busy. My Facebook buddies. And we we, we stick together. You know, we your community, you keep can't afford to be shy. You have got to network. You have got, got to be local fighters. Don't yeah. hesitate to call. Don't, don't hesitate to go and call like, like women's WNBA and the men's NBA. Um, go, go talk to them and say, hey, I'm your local you know, fighter. I won this championship belt in the audience. Any, yeah. Anytime major fights to whoever's in out there get known get public recognition you really really network despite doing all that it was so hard we were still hitting barriers yeah big time big time and that was about the same time that you got with that messy realtor that was had the contract right yeah yeah uh our uh, our next muay thai kickboxing Camp. It's where I won my WIBF title and my title against Kim Messer. Uh, something happened with the and Philip Wong, the gentleman who owned Fairtech, very wealthy textile guy in Thailand. So he, he was really pushing us fighters. To, something happened, and next thing I know, we all wake up one morning. My daughter would live with a lot of people from Europe, all across the United States, would come and spend the whole week with us to train, just see what our schedule was like and work, work out twice a day. And um, next thing we know, they're escorting this manager out. We were all like, what happened? And you know, wow, the, the manager, the owner just gave up and says, you know, that's it. I'm, I'm gonna close this county and, you know, We'll we'll move to San. Uh, I think they and everybody was moving to San Francisco. My my fight coach, he's a stand up fighter. He was also a boxer himself and a Muay Thai fighter. He was went to Lumpini Stadium in Thailand. The only American guy that won and beat the, this this guy is awesome, awesome fighter. But he went to move to eventually in Chicago, right, to open his own gym. And here, here I am, I would love to go and Bonnie Canino, when she opened up her, her gym in Miami, she called me up and said, women's Olymp 
Olympic boxing is going to take off. I need some trainers. Come down here. And I was like, oh, man, I too. But I'm torn. I, if I leave the state, I'm always going to to make sure I come back. And it was just a constant mess. And I always had to check in with the program, with whatever I was doing. Everything was in question. I mean, he made it look like I was a ter terrible person. I was a fighter. And I mean, I was scrutinized so bad. But, you know, I mean, eventually I uh, volunteered now with this type of program. Big deal at this point. There's a lot, a lot of families out there where the drug addiction and these kids are being pulled from their family because they, they can't get it. And we, I volunteered for this program that it's a lo location where I open vision rooms, uh, toys for the kid to play, kitchen for them to eat, and ordered a um, requirement that these parents come and visit their, their kids so they can keep together, work on teaching the parents classes and and learn, learn to get their, their addictions, right? Right. So I was part of program it it hit home i mean it and i saw how easily it, it you know situations like this can wreck the family you worse with the drug addiction so it's one of my passions and like like i said if i ever won that not only would i be taking care of women boxing and trying to promote keep the sport, sport going yeah. that that is one of my passions giving back and just as a fighter, girls nowadays, you need to keep yourself busy. It's counseling, that kind of stuff is out there in your community. There's always something you can keep yourself busy, keep yourself in the limelight, be a spokesperson for something, even just your fight career. Yes. Show, show your diet. Exactly, exactly. Um, it, it's definitely getting better. I can definitely say we're, we're moving in the right direction. We're slowly getting yeah. there. Um, well, that got, so we had kind of talked about manager, your, Yeah. That manager yeah, we're in Vegas, I ended up severing that contract. That I just caution a lot of fighters. Before you sign a contract, don't make the decision so quick. Don't be irrational. Yeah, mull, mull over it. Get to know the background you're signing your contract with, because I remember going to the Nevada boxer and I, and we spoke to Mark Ratner. And Mark Ratner looked over the contract, and because we had, he said, "Are you sure you're pretty comfortable with this?" And I, and I was like, "Yeah, you know, he's a friend of mine." And I just thought, you know, he was in my corner that fight that, that I fought with Regina Holman. So I ended up uh, signing the contract and, and barely staying a month, month or two at his home. And it was just a challenge. He wanted to figure out who I was, what makes me tick, right? Are you? I can't see your picture. Okay, there we go. Can you see oh. me now? Yeah, I, okay. I can see you. We had a little, I mean, we had yeah, a little snafu there, guys. We're back. No worries. Okay. Yeah, this matter wanted to know me, right? Too personal. When I should have crossing some lines that were just very personal. And uh, like, example, you know, I, I, I made sure I, uh, I had gotten a job at the boss busy, and then I. I'd come home and I would train. And for my keep, of course, I'm in the room. But I was also going out in the backyard, picking up his dog shit, right? <laughs> I was, I was, you know, I wanted to make sure, look, I'm not going for this free, this for the sugar daddy, right? Don't, right. don't you start thinking that's where this, in the back of his mind, he was thinking, he started asking me real personal questions, you know. Honestly, at that time, uh, Brooke, um, he, he knew that I was 
was dating a partner, right? I hadn't come out. I hadn't uh, admitted to anybody that I was gay. My family, my uh, immediate family knew. My parents weren't happy about it. Um, they, they wanted me to get church counseling. If it didn't get church counseling, they just support you. So it cut off that relationship immediately. So I lost a baby. And then, you know, I relied on my sister and my brother. And they were cool and stuff my sister-in-law but my daughter's father and he kept bringing that up and he's a lesbian and I don't want my child raised in that atmosphere and it, it, and it like I said CPS back then was involved and it scrutinized everything pedal and back up and yeah to save my family to save my, my child yeah, I kept it quiet. Yeah, I backed off and and, and but he know. But this manager knew, right? And he'd come home and try to about, so do you, do you hate men? You know, the ma male body like or something real stupid questions like that. And I'm like, dude, it's not about that at all. I don't, I don't feel a connection. My fight brothers, I get, we don't cross that line. We don't discuss that. They don't disrespect me. That's the relationship between us. But here you are, you're trying to get inside how I tick. Okay, you know, I get right. it. I mean, you're not going to get, it, you know, you know, I try to be forthright with him and tell him, yeah. And he says, well, dad, you know, and. And then another time I came home from work and he had porn on in the living TV, 50 whatever inch TV. He had, had some porn going on. He goes, Trevino, or does that turn you off? Or, you know, he just kept trying to get inside my head. I mean, I'm done. You know, I just started packing yeah. my stuff up. I took off without, without my, uh, what do you call it? Um. Uh, Pass the photo passport wallet fold bill fold. I left without I had the opportunity to fight in Japan against one of the Japanese fighters, and he kept saying, "Well, yes, you do, do Eric. You know, just give it to me, you know." Um, but no, I mean, we had I had and I had to pay him. He demanded three thousand dollars for some reason. Living there for three thousand dollars, how is that possible? And when the judge finally said, okay, give me your bill, the most they settled was for 800 right? So I did a couple of fights, paid him $800, done. After that, I didn't want to sign any contract. I was so terrorizing now who I signed with. And like I said, even the promoters, because I wanted to, especially when the opportunity came up to fight like Magic Johnson, was going to get that what you saw there was my portfolio i was starting to get my, myself um modeling shoes to promote myself so yeah we were so close so close just wasn't happening we kept hitting barriers we kept hitting yeah. walls it wasn't most public type of stuff it was getting the public open to accept women's boxing the mind it exactly exactly yeah there's always seems like there's always just a, you take five steps forward and you know th you know eight steps back like every time you make progress um yeah. we'll talk. go talk to daddy i'm um, sorry that's a okay <laughs> every show i swear she she pops in here um that's my middle daughter um, there's somebody that's uh, Martha R in the comments. I don't know if you can see it, but it says, hello, I was friends with Yvonne. It's a Martha R. Can you see the comments over there? Oh, Martha Romano, you were there uh, at the uh, WIBF uh, title champion. She was a, a corrections officer here in Arizona at the time. And okay. we hung out and she, she got to experience that. That was just, it was wonderful for all of us she was one of the saying oh 
oh my God, you have got to win that fight, Yvonne. She's got camera crews, you know, she's in Germany, you know, we all yeah. talk, talked about the pressure was on, believe, believe me, I knew nothing. <laughs> but yeah, you, know, you met, you stepped in the ring and you did your best, you know, you figured it out. Yeah, that's all you can do, all you can do. Uh, Martha, I appreciate you tuning in to support your friend here and my show. Um, if you guys have any questions in the chat, just let us know. Um, so um, in 1997, um, you were you faced Suzanne Riccio, Riccio for the yes. IFBA title. Um, but I think you yes. had mentioned to me that you had a lot of struggles with that fight um, to make it happen. Um, and then yeah. like working with the IFBA and Judy Coolis, like how was the experience yeah. working with them compared to the WIBF? Because I didn't sign with uh, um, Richard Coolis Event Entertainment. I'll I'll fight for you guys. I'll sign the fight contract. We'll agree on the the dollar. I want to be exclusive to you guys because I'm gonna stay open now. The WIBF, you know, with that, that stripping my title away. So I thought, okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dig my you know be somebody's exclusive. I'm gonna try to to stay open i want to try to stay a free agent just like the kids in the the you know sports industry as well but you know i don't get invited to like the uh in the biloxi mystery run and all the fighters were invited to go into that and they all all got these little invitations and saying they're all going somewhere and i'm like what do you mean he goes get ready you know aren't you going to go and i'm about anything he goes well it says on the invitation here and i'm like well okay you know you know just little things like that where you, you're just kind of left out i mean it wanted to i wanted to focus on just the fight just fighting you know, the fight. yeah 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 promoting there's a time to do that like they do now way prior way of the fight you don't try to squeeze everything together all at once so you know live and learn i mean i i mean the ufc i mean dana white you know plans things ahead the fighter can, can digress and be more about uh decompressing and you know, about the yourself you know that has its place and then now you focus on the fight oh yes exactly um, my tech guy, Eric is messaging me saying that there is, um, streaming issues with, uh, packet loss, which is what's causing the poor connection. Am I patchy? Am I, um, cutting out too, Eric? Um, so he's asking me if, um, we can, we can finish up like briefly, but if we can reschedule and then he can work with you on getting the connection fixed. Because he said a lot of people are saying they can't, you have a great story and they love your story, but it's so choppy. They can't really make it all out. We it's can, not your fault. He said that their um, the platform is having issues. Um, we, and Brooke, no worries. We, okay. We can do this again. Uh, yeah. So everybody that's um, joined us tonight, we're, I know I had a lot of them saying they can't understand us in the chat. Um we'll reschedule yvonne to come back on we'll do it all over again um i'll have yvonne get with eric um and do like a practice setup run and he can work with you in, in the background he can send you a link to like a dummy page just like this um and then he can work with you until he gets it tweaked just right for the for the show and the sound and everything um, I mean, we pretty much covered a lot of what I was going to ask you. There's definitely a lot yeah. more stuff I was going to go. I mean, there was a lot more stuff I was going to go over with you, but, um, if you don't mind and everybody else don't mind, I guess we'll just kind of stop there. We'll start all over. We'll do the exact same show again. So everybody can, cause he said he loves your story. It's just very choppy. So people aren't getting the whole thing, which isn't your fault. Um, so let's no break for now. Um, if you want to go back, Eric, if you want to bring her back in the green room, we can talk to her when I come out. I'll just finish up the show real quick. And then so I'll pop you back in the back and then I'll say goodbye to everyone.
everybody, and then I'll jump in the back with you. Eric. Okay, there we go. Um, all right, everybody. Am I cutting out too, Eric, or was it just her side? I guess I don't know. But everybody, I want to thank you guys for joining me tonight. I apologize for the technical difficulties. I apologize we were late signing on. Um, Yvonne was having some very big technical difficulties with her laptop, computer, and her phone getting into the system. Um, my tech guy, Eric, has reached out, and it is something going on with the system on her end. So what he suggested is we reschedule the interview. I will bring Yvonne back on. We will do the exact same interview over again. Um, so that way you guys can get her full story because I have talked with Yvonne quite a bit over the last week or two. Um, and I've heard her pretty much her entire story. Um, so I want you guys to actually be able to hear and understand the whole story and not get choppy bits and pieces. I'm so sorry that this happened. Um, you can't do anything about technology sometimes. Um, but we will do it again. Exact same interview. Um, well, I'll ask her the same questions so you guys get the full story and the full gist of what all she had to really go through on a clear, clean stream. Um, so with that, it may be a little while before I get her back in. I will, I'll see if I can move some stuff around. I'm actually booked out with my people with interviews all the way to September, actually almost October. Um, that's how hard I've been working on getting people on the show. But I'll see if I can move some stuff around. Maybe we can get her back on. I can swap somebody for something else. I don't know. I'll see what I can do. But she will be back on. In the meantime, thank you all for stopping in. Thank you for being patient with us being late getting on tonight. Hopefully it won't happen again. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed what you could hear. We'll do it again. Um, please do, though, make sure that you like, subscribe, and share. Tell your friends, tell your friends' friends to come here every Tuesday night. Hang out with me. Um, I think I'm pretty cool. We get along, ask questions, um, spread the word. Let's get some more people on here. Um, also for those of you that are new, um, or old or back again, there is a donate button below that you can donate directly to me for the show. Um, so if you would like to do that, that's awesome. Not required. Um, you can all of, also follow me on all my social media platforms. I have two accounts, one under Brooke, no mercy, Deardorff, Millbrook. And then also a separate podcast page, of course, No Punches Pulled with No Mercy. Check those out. Um, thanks for tuning in. I apologize again for all the issues. We will do this show again, I promise. Um, until then, I will see you all again next week, same time, same place, next Tuesday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with the next episode of No Punches Pulled with No Mercy. And remember... Until then, punch hard because nothing else matters. Have a good night, y'all.